Number 11, NLC Service Line Warranty Program. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, per our municipal code, property owners are responsible for the sewer lateral from the main to their home and the water service from the water meter, which is typically located at the back of sidewalk to their home. So many of you attended the League of California Cities Conference last fall, in which you saw a program that's sponsored by the National League of Cities per the Utility Service Partners Private Label, Inc. It's a program to provide insurance for these laterals. And so um, tonight we have Bill Coffey here with Utility Service Partners Private Label, Inc. Yeah. That's okay. That's all right. All right, so I'm going to introduce Bill Coffey with the Utility Service Partners Private Good Labeling. Entrance, Bill. And he has a, a brief presentation for you tonight, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions at the end. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Bill Coffey from the National League of Cities Service Line Warranty Program. Honorable Mayor and Council, thank you for the opportunity to discuss our company and the programs we can offer the residents of Yuba City. Why well, choose utility service partners, our experience, our reputation, we're a Better Business Bureau A plus rated company, also a recipient of the 2018 Torch Awards for Marketplace Ethics, and our partnership with the NLC started in 2010 and it's grown and grown since. We are the only service line program that the um, National League of Cities endorses. And Utility Service Partners, a home serve company, is the company that administers the program for the NLC and looks after it. And, oops, how do I go back? Here we go. Some of the program benefits helps address the public policy issue of aging and infrastructure. Aging infrastructure, the pipes, sewer pipes, water pipes in the city, your public works crew looks after that. On the homeowner's side, these are the lateral lines in their property. And this is coverage, optional voluntary insurance for them to purchase that the city's making available with this program. It's a free public awareness campaign. It lets the homeowners know first and foremost, these lines, even though they're out of sight and out of mind, they are their responsibility. The city's responsibility ends at the water meter for the water line and at the sewer main out in the street for the sewer line program. <clears throat> so by educating the homeowners on the lateral line responsibilities, they then know that these are their responsibility the city doesn't look after it, even though they think they should. Um, and certainly homeowner policy, unless they have a rider, it doesn't look after it either. So the program, we take care of everything turnkey. We take care of all the marketing, the postage, the advertising, the billing, A to Z turnkey, no cost to the city, no public funds are used for this program. We educate homeowners about their lateral lines responsibility and it's peace of mind for the homeowner. When they sign up, there's one phone number to call when there's a problem, and then we have a local area plumber come out and take care of the problem. All the repairs are done by a local area licensed plumber. We vet them fully, A-plus rated businesses. We have a thorough screening, and uh, we pick the ones that are gonna work well in the city. Make sure that they work to know the, pull the right permits and to do the job right the first time. Some of our programs and what they cover, we have a sewer and septic line lateral coverage that would cover from the sewer main out in the street to the exterior wall of the home. It's $8,500 of coverage every time the plumber comes out, typically more than enough for street cutting, sidewalk cutting, and replacing that line if the whole line has to be replaced. We, there's no annual lifetime limits. Again, 8,500 resets each time. There's no paperwork, no deductible. Nothing for the homeowner to do other than call us to get the plumber out to take care of the problem. The rates are very affordable. It's $9 per month for the sewer line program. And the water line program, same 8,500 of coverage. That provides coverage from the water main, I mean the water meter to the exterior wall of the home. And that is $6 per month. And these prices are the same for all the cities in California that we offer the program to. And I'll mention some of those cities that we work with as well. Some of the benefits, oops, that was the wrong arrow. 
We also have in-home plumbing, $3,000 of coverage covers the sewer line, the water line in the home, the line underneath the slab even covers a clogged toilet, same uh, $9.49 per month for the program. You can sign up and cancel at any time and um, it's optional and voluntary as well to sign up. Multiple payment methods for any of the programs are available. They can fill they can do a credit card deduction or mail a check or provide a credit card. Our marketing approach, uh, we take care of this program without any funds being used. We take care of everything turnkey. We only do it by direct mail. So there's typically a spring, a summer, and a fall mailer that go out, and we take a break during the holidays. Nothing goes out without the city first approving the letter, so you'll know exactly what's on the letter, what it says. Once it's locked down in English, then we can also offer it in Spanish, and that way you cover everybody in the city, Spanish and English. Same thing if they call up our call center to sign up, we have Spanish translators available. Call center state of the art. In the last uh, three years, we've handled over a thousand claims an hour, 49, every 49 seconds a claim. So about 1.3 million claims in the last um, three years. Again, participation is voluntary. And the marketing clearly states that the city does not provide this program, that we are providing the program. The letter itself will be signed by us and it include our information as far as the contact information. Altogether, we have over 650 partners in 42 states and that number's actually increased on both numbers. Recently, we're now over six, 750 partners in 43 states. Some of our California partners nearby, Daly City and San Bruno are partners, Yountville, and also um, Vallejo. Some big water districts would be Alameda County Water District, Dublin San Ramon, and um, Contra Costa Water District, to name a few. Some of our program's success with these 650 partnerships, we have over 4 million customers and over 7 million service contracts. A lot of folks wanna buy the water and the sewer. You get a little bit of a discount by doing so. That way for the peace of mind, they have full coverage for everything in their front yard. We have a 97% claims approval rating of the 3% that we don't approve. Perhaps it's folks who have not paid for the fast, last few months, they're out of the program, and therefore they didn't have the coverage when they called in but uh, we're not in the business of denying a lot of the claims and uh, making homeowners get upset. We 97% claim approval rating. We cover what we say we're gonna cover. We cover tree root intrusion, we cover ground shift, and we cover corrosion. We cover the typical things that the homes um, have problems with. And those lines typically after 40 years, sometimes 50 years, that's the lifespan of the lines. Most homes are in that 37 year average. So they're right there at the cusp of being at the age where they need to be replaced. We don't have to do any pre-inspection. The homeowner simply calls us. And as long as they're a single family home with their own water and sewer line connection, they can sign up for the program. It's not available to businesses or um, apartment buildings. Probably the big one here, 80% of the res respondents of this Harris survey said that they'd <coughs> strongly or somewhat agree with the statement lo local community government should be responsible for educating homeowners on their service line responsibilities. So by having this letter out there three times a year, we send a follow-up letter two weeks later. So in all six envelopes go through the door. We're not knocking on any doors, no emails, no phone calls, just simply a letter that the city's approved that goes out telling the homeowners about the program and letting them make the option if they want to sign up. So we're here to address the public policy, aging infrastructure issue, and especially on the homeowner's property. We do have a five page agreement that um, attorney Shannon and Michael Rock have seen and they've looked it over. We think that there's a few things that we have to discuss with them according to Diana, that's no problem. We can discuss that tonight or at any point. And we do ask for the city to um, approve the program. The one requirement we have for the program is the use of your city logo for all marketing, advertising, billing, and outreach that we do so that the homeowners know that the city is participating in this program. It's not just some company that's mailed into the city and now all of a sudden the city manager or the mayor are flooded with calls saying, what's this all about? I just got this. 
this program has been fully vetted by the city and it's been partnered or proved to be partnered if uh, that's the way that uh, you folks vote. And the last thing is that um, the Service Line Warranties of America, that is our company. It's a, we're a parent company over them. And Service Line Warranties of America is the agreement, uh, the company behind the agreement. So they are our subsidiary that looks after this insurance program for all of our customers US wide. And any questions? Any questions from any member of the public? All right. Essentially, it's a, uh, you want to, our, our thing is use our logo, permission to use our logo, which basically will essentially legitimize the advertising to our residents to give them the option to purchase your product. Yes. All right. Any comment or questions from the council? Yes, yes through sir, the mayor. Go ahead. Thank you for the presentation. I was a little confused with a few things. Hopefully you can help me better understand. On the, um, there was a slide about three or four back about royalty and non-royalty, and it had different dollar figures than, than what I've read in the staff report. Um, I think it referred to $9.99. Last line? Yeah, the second to last line. Right there? Yeah, What help me understand what that all is. Sure. The non-royalty program is our baseline price program. It's the lowest cost for the residents. The city has the option to go with a royalty program. The pricing for that would be 75 cents more for the homeowner. And the, then that 75 cents would come back to the city in the form of a royalty or a license fee. So it can bring in additional revenue to the city. Some cities want the additional revenue, some cities do not. Up till now, we've only discussed the non-royalty program, but you're free to choose whichever program. It's a different agreement for each one, but it's the same, um, very similar terms, conditions, and um, so forth. So it's $9.75 for the sewer line program, $6.75 for the water line program, and $9.99 for the in-home plumbing program. Okay, thank you for that clarification. The other was, I think I heard you say that if, if a uh, subscriber went for both the water and the sewer, there's a break, or are those flat fees? So is it nine? Plus six, or is it something different than that? It's nine dollars for the water or the sewer, six for the water, but there's a discount if they sign up for both programs. There, that's parent. That seems to come up each time when we send it out. Because, for example, the first mailer might be the water line program, then in the summer the sewer line program, and then both programs in the fall. And there's a discount if they want to sign up for more than one program. And that discount is ten percent. Okay. Um, uh, this is more for our staff. Thank you, Diana. Do we have an existing property owner awareness program? Sure. We do not. Um, oftentimes what happens is that someone will have an issue with their sewer lateral. And so when the crews are out there, that's when they're educating them more about whose responsibility it is. We're not aware of too many issues on people's water services because once they get past the meter, it becomes the homeowner's responsibility so we don't have a gauge of, of how many um, water services that this applies to. But when it comes to sewer laterals, those are extremely costly because you are in the roadway and dealing with oftentimes traffic and um, other conditions. And I just want to note the item before you tonight, um, you know, the, the recommendation is to provide direction to staff to bring a contract back if council so chooses. Yep. Thanks. So it's does the agreement as it stands today, does it give you the exclusive right to market this program within our jurisdiction or could other providers come in, solicit us the same and our logo could be on, um, essentially we're giving you permission to use our brand. Correct. So can it, would others be, would our brand be accessible to them as well? We have an exclusive on the agreement that's in front of you now, but Diana had mentioned that that was one concern with um, Shannon and perhaps Michael Rock as well, and we can remove that clause. So there is a, a part that says this is an exclusive agreement. No other competitors can be in the pro can sign up with the city. Part of the reason for that is if you had our program go out, and certainly we have our terms, conditions, what we cover, some other company 
their program goes out, probably different prices, different coverage, maybe deductible, maybe not. It gets confusing for the homeowners, but you're welcome. You're welcome. There's not uh, any competitors really going US wide like we are, certainly not to this scale of uh, 750 cities. But if you want to remove that, I've been uh, conversing with Diana about that, and we can take that out. And in place of it, we can say that if you bring in a competitor, that um, we reserve the right to cancel the program. It, we may, not that we would, but we may uh, reserve the right. I guess the follow-up question is, and I don't know your business, you know, are there others that do this? It does come up, yes. So there are other competitors that... Oh, I thought you meant other cities that want that removed. Yeah. No, um, I'm, I'm speaking of, we're, we've got a, a nice presentation from your company. Sure. You know, the door swings open and now we have two or three and or or maybe none. I don't know. Yeah. And that's why I'm asking. This is the only one with the National League of Cities. And we're really the only company that is out there coast to coast, every state, um, all but seven, I guess. Um, so there isn't really major competition in this area. It would be very hard for a company to pull this off and reach the economies of scale we do at the prices we do, um, and then have to go through all the hoops of finding local area plumbers, all the things required to handle a turnkey for every city. You may find a competitor, but if you do, that's fine. And uh, if you decide that they you know, bring in the program, that's fine as well. And we can work on the agreement on that red line. Thank you. Sure. Through the mayor. Yes. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, got to spend some time down at the booth at the league when we were in uh, Southern California. And on the surface, great program, but you just hit on one of the concerns that I have when you said your program getting local area plumbers to do this. My main concern is what is the effect is this going to have on our economy and how does local contractors get into your program, and do they have to take a discounted rate to participate in this? Are we taking you know, business away from them by allowing you to come in as a uh, national program to take care of our residents versus, you know, like the one program, if you've got a clogged toilet, right now they would call four or five different plumbers here in the area, but if they have this plan, is that going to take it away from them, or are you going to ask them to discount their rates down if they affiliate with you? Well, first of all, we vet every plumber. So we vet them first and foremost to make sure they're going to do good quality work. I was speaking to Diana beforehand um, about 5.30 this evening about that. We can work off of a list. If you have a list of here are the plumbers that are registered with the city that have pulled the permits and that um, work with our city, you can provide us that list. You're not saying you have to work with all of them. You're just saying here's some choices for you. If you want to be hands off and say we don't get involved in any of that, it's up to you to find the local area plumbers. But we start here and we spread out as needed. But uh, we're in the business of vetting plumbers. We work in cities as small as five, 600 households, and we find local area plumbers in those communities as well. We're not taking away from their business, we're supplementing it. You know, they're not gonna be making full-time money on our program, but it'll certainly come in handy. And uh, they negotiate with us for all the pricing and everything so that when there's a problem, the homeowner does not pay the plumber unless it's over $8,500. The plumber bills us and we pay the plumber. So everything is agreed to ahead of time. And typically with your billing cycle, is that typically net 30, net 90? Uh, are you familiar with that side? Not, I, I'm familiar with that subject, but I'm not sure how long we pay them how long that is, I can certainly look into it. I would be curious to that because a lot of the contractors, when they do that, they're used to getting paid as they do the jobs, maybe with net 30. And I know that when the uh, federal government with federal contracts went to a net 90 pay, it had an impact on people doing business with the government. So be curious to see how that would be addressed. My other question is, um, concerns the marketing and, and reaching out, what safeguards are we going to have in place for protecting our homeowner's information? Are you sending things blanketed to homeowner at, you know, ABC address, or are you looking to get, you know, basically confidential information, uh, you know, homeowner, resident address? What is the level of protection, especially with all the, the data securities, and what do you have in place to protect our residents from having their information uh, sold, um, marketed outside of yourself, or by all means uh, hacked by any reason that's in your computer system? Sure. We're fully 
um, first of all, we can work off of your mailing list. We just want an address and a name of somebody. And if that's some list that you can provide, I mentioned it to Diana as well, that works for us because it takes care of folks who move in and out of a property or maybe who passed away, God forbid. So that mailing list you have is pretty darn accurate. If you choose that, oh, we don't wanna give you any mailing list, we don't wanna get involved with that, we can go out and buy a mailing list Either way works for us, but most cities do give us the mailing list because it is very um, efficient. We have full data security on it and it, we protect it completely. Okay, and the last question along those lines, because it's becoming industry standard, anyone that has uh, confidential information on servers and stuff to carry some sort of you know, uh, cybersecurity insurance to where if it's hacked that the people are covered. Um, if that was to happen, is your uh, company insured to the point that you would be able to step in and and cover any data breach um, like we've seen with national and world companies that's inadvertently been hacked and they've had to step in with credit monitoring and stuff like that because you're talking about credit card information, you're talking about confidential information. I just want to make sure that the partnership is uh, protected with the information that you have. Sure. Well, rest assured, as I mentioned, we have four million customers, so we know how to take care of the data and keep it secure. Um, but I can double check if you'd like on the cybersecurity and our insurance. Please. I haven't been asked that one before. Thank you. Through the mayor again, sorry. Uh, Councilman Shaw brings up a, a, a huge emerging issue, uh, which is the California Consumer Privacy Act. I would venture to guess that our, our uh, subscribers to water and sewer are consumers by definition, in which case, we're not supposed to give any of that information out. At least that's my understanding of the law as it applies to the business I run. Um, so I think if, on a go-forward basis, for staff anyway, we're going to need to make sure that, uh, that we're abiding by that, that, those regulations as established by the state. They are, are pretty strict in regards to how you give out um, people's information. Okay. In that case, we would go out and buy a Zip Plus 4 mailing list, we just would need to know your uh, zip codes. Sure, I, I guess from, because we're co-branding, um, it concerns me that people may think that we're providing them that information. So I just think this is an area we need to walk through rather than run. Sure. Just make sure that we're not putting ourselves as a city in harm's way, by either by perception or by reality. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, if uh, going back to that list of cities we work with in California, San Diego, Los Angeles, Rialto, Chula Vista just approved. We work with some very big cities, and um, uh, most of those do provide us with the mailing list. So I'm not sure about that California regulation, but if uh, that's a tight regulation, I'm sure that we're following it, and we can, as again, um, go out and buy a mailing list if needed. It was just more of a direction to our staff to make sure we're... Thank you. <laughs> All right, before we discuss, any member of the public care to comment? Nope. Open for discussion. Through the mayor, uh, you know, when I first became aware of this down at the League of Cities, I think it is, it has, the program has a lot of merit. I'm a little concerned about co-branding and certainly the issue of exclusivity um, because there could be others that are out there, and uh, there's no, no, uh, no ill will towards towards your company at all. But um, just a free market system should allow others that want to get into that business the opportunity to get in into it. Uh, I'm not in favor of the royalty program, uh, and but I would my my concern is just not making sure that if there are others that provide the service, um, that we would at least give them consideration like we're giving this company. Some good points. Anybody else? Through the mayor. Um, again, saw down at the league. Um, echo what the vice mayor said. Main concern is protecting. Uh, and again, I think slowly get all the answers uh, to the questions. But we do need to, if we pursue this, uh, we need to have that educational piece out there for our customers so that they do understand that this is not coming from the city but it's a way for them to get insurance that's been vetted by the city of all means. Because as you said in the earlier slide, there's a lot of people in town that do not have sufficient reserves to cover a disaster that, that comes up. 
And uh, this is a way to mitigate that and provide a benefit. So I concur with the vice mayor. Let's tread, tread slowly, but get those answers. There you go. I think we should just uh, let staff take care of this for us and bring it back to us and use the recommendation. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I mean, oh, we, through a, I'm saying, you know, through an election, you hit a button and we get everybody's addresses, who lives there, this, that, and everything else, you know, it's, and where they live and everything and who they are and this and everything else just through an election basis. So, I mean, this same thing with this gentleman here. So, if we get it from the election agency and they're not getting scammed and this gentleman has 4 million people, uh, 4 million people that he's dealing with, I think he's, he's pretty trustworthy and hasn't had any issues yet and I hope he's not having any in the future. So um, just let staff uh, do the homework for us and educate us and let us know what, what they suggest here in the future date. All right. Thank you. And if I may, the competition will remove that completely as I said earlier. So rest assured on that. Do you, do you, okay, you, is there, can you give me a general idea? Is there 10 of you? Is there hundreds of you uh, in this business? Uh, Less than a handful that go U.S. wide. Sometimes we run into a county, like let's say somebody in Sacramento, a big plumber, handles the whole area of Sacramento, and they decide to put a program like this out there. But as you can appreciate, if you're getting $6 a month, 72 bucks a year for a water line coverage, and you're providing 8,500 of coverage each time the plumber comes out, you know, one claim in 100 years, you're behind the eight ball, you're in the hole. So we do it by high economy of scale. We go in world nationwide, the National League of Cities name and presence, our company's name and presence. And um, so certainly you may have somebody come in your door. I doubt you've ever had anyone come in your door prior to me. So that kind of gives you an idea. My prior life, I was in water meters and AMI, and there are many water meter companies, many AMI companies. This is not like that. To the mayor, um, I appreciate your presentation. Um, I have a, in reading the exhibit A, when the license conditions, you were, it states that pretty much you want the city logo and and the access to that. What if, what if we didn't put the city logo on there? What would what would that look like? If you didn't have the city logo on it, I think that the uh, results would be very poor in terms of people would get it and they would just pitch it, they wouldn't read it, they would figure who knows who this company is, why would I buy their program? Mm -hmm. By having the city logo on there, it lets the homeowners know the city's participating in this program. We also work with you two weeks before the first mailer goes out, a press release in a local newspaper. We also send a postcard out to the homeowners to let them know they're gonna be receiving a letter from us. So on the front end, there's a few steps that are done to help the community know. We can also help you with a web presence, some information online for folks who like to go online and see what's new in the city. So yes, you're gonna have onesie twosies of folks who didn't catch all that, but an awful lot of folks will know about it before the first letter gets into their door. So do you, have you had any other cities that have just, you know, like the whole product that you're providing, the warranty, but will not go with the city logo? And then the outcome of that? The outcome of that is that we don't uh, offer the program to that city. Okay. Without the use of the city logo, um, it, your city's not participating. It's um, We're still going to have to do all the work of plumbers and mailers and everything else for less of a result. Okay. And... Um, when when a property, so these would be purchased by the property owner, not by the renter. If a person's renting a home, yeah. it'll go to that home unless your we use your mailing list and your mailing list sends the bill to that uh, owner of the property that they rent out. So the property owner would have to purchase it, not the renter. No, the renter, anybody can purchase it who lives at that property. Okay, I just need to get that clear. Then if, um, so where do you find that you have the highest rate of claims? Is it water or sewer issues? Probably sewer. Tree root intrusion is a big one, and Diane and her group probably know that, and we cover that. We talking about that today, that her tree. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, approximately... 
out of how many of those customers? What, what did you say? How many total customers? Uh, Four million customers, seven million policies. So out of that, it's about what? 50, 60 percent? How? I mean, 40, 50. I don't know because I, I think that we have sell more water line coverage than we do sewer, but they're pretty neck and neck. The third program, the in-home plumbing, a little bit less of that because folks have perhaps their homeowner's policy covers that. They're less concerned about things that are in their home. They're more concerned about the lines outside under the ground that they know aren't covered. So approximately about if you were to offer this, how many um, um, warranties do you sell in a community? like ours? We'd expect about 10% of the homeowners would sign up in the first three years. That's a um, pretty typical number. So it's not going to be everybody. But uh, the first year, three mailers go out. Folks are getting used to it. Second year, mailers going out. People are signing up even, you know, word of mouth gets out or you say to your neighbor or you say to, you know, your daughter, oh, this program, I signed up, it's good. You ought to look at it. Mm -hmm. So it builds and builds from there. But typically it's around 10%. So your home, you have about 22,000 homeowners, single family homes here. Mm -hmm. So about 2,200 folks that sign up. Okay. Right. I, I mean, higher, I, but that, that would be what we'd expect. Yeah, I'd be interested in learning a little bit more details about those specifics about the community and where, where you know, if we had about 10% of our community purchasing this and, um, and if there's a savings for a community member that can't afford it and all of a sudden there's a need, I mean, that's really important to me because I know that those expenses can put people out of their homes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we just talked about the homeless and how that quickly can change a person's life when they can't afford if something breaks in their front yard and they have no control over that. So um, I, I just feel like we need a little bit more, more information. Okay. All right. So I think overall, we we have a consensus to move forward. We have a few things. Um, if Councilman Espindola, if you can get the your questions, whatever information you're seeking, um, to City Manager's office. So we'll bring it back to the council as a non-royalty agreement with uh, the non-competitive. You know, we'll take the clause out so that there's. Uh, potential for competition. We'll be happy to work with Council Member uh, Espindola on any other questions you have. We can work through Diana on any other question that comes up in the, the firm, um, and we'll bring it back um, in the next meeting. And one specific, uh, in addition to what has already been asked, is um, by virtue of applying or allowing per the um, folks to have permission to use our logo, uh, we are, in effect, at least in the public side, likely endorsing this company. And by doing so, um, if there's a problem with the company and they don't meet an adequate, some, they come to an impasse as far as how to resolve the claim, are we on the hook by virtue of our logo being on the on that paperwork? Or um, that would be a concern for me. We're not legally on the hook. However, you will likely hear from the consumer as elected officials. Got it. Okay. That's, that's the extent of it, though? And that was some of the language we wanted to clarify when we bring it back to is some of that risk management indemnification right. language. So right. that that's crystal clear that the city is not liable for any actions of the firm. The firm is completely on the hook for their work product and any issues they have with the homeowners. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, just so you know, the city actually does not have any regulations on use of its logos right now. That portion of the code is actually reserved and it hasn't been updated. It's probably been reserved for probably 30 or 40 years at this point. So you do have more flexibility, but you don't have any guidelines in your ordinance with regards to that use. All right, we, we, can, we can make that decision. I just want to know if we do, or if we're on the hook for anything by virtue of just simply using the logo. But um, if you can add that to the list, that'd be great. And thank you very much. And thank you, sir, very much. I don't know how far you came, but I know it wasn't local, so thank you. You're the mayor. Mr. Mayor? Well, we got one more question over here over a second. Yes, sir. Please, I had one here request. No problem. Um, by any chance, are you folks the same company that works with California Water for the City of Mary's? Well, it's the City of Mary's. That's called, are you the folks with California Water? Yes, California Water is a client of ours. Okay, so I can let you folks know right now, the City of Mary's, well, the, the uh, citizens, I had several friends that they said they paid that extra $6 a month, and they have these folks or up and beyond. There's not been any, I have not, well, this uh, there's only six people that have had it and have had the issue, but they said these folks are up and beyond had no complaints at all. 
they come in, they take her. They had one fellow had a sewer line with tree roots going through it and had to replace uh, 60 feet of a sewer line. Didn't cost them a dime. And they were, and the city of Marysville at the time, I think he said it, they were only paying $6 extra a month for, for sewer. So they do do wonderful work. That's so good I, news. Thank you very much. Thank you. That. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.